Welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. Let's talk about the biggest misconception about betta fish care. So if you look at the fish keeping hobby and the industry as a whole, things look pretty nice. Lots of beautiful tanks, inspiration, YouTube videos with tutorials, so many photos on Google to look at. Things look really nice. But then you look at the betta keeping industry and hobby and I swear it feels like every day we're going backwards and things are getting worse and worse for these poor fish. So why does this happen? It seems that the problem begins with fish stores. These fish start their lives on large breeding farms where they are bred and raised in nice little ponds so they have a very good start. But after that they have to be separated so they don't fight and prepared for shipping in tiny containers. It's a standard practice and how most fish get shipped nowadays. The problem begins when fish stores say it's okay to continue to keep these fish in such crappy conditions. They say that wild bettas live in tiny mud puddles and therefore do not require clean water or space. They say that since bettas can breathe air, they don't need a filter, heater or any space. Actually they don't like moving water at all and it freaks them out. Actually, the betta comes from parts of Vietnam, Malaysia, Thailand and Cambodia in the river basins of the Mekong and Chao Phraya rivers. They are found in rice paddies and drainage ditches, river basins and small streams. Although the water is not very deep and it is very heavily planted, the betta actually has a pretty large and substantial territory. It is estimated that a male has a territory of about 3 feet in length. It is also true that in the dry months the water levels will recede. Some betta fish will get separated into puddles where they have no access to food and the water will very quickly get toxic. If it does not rain for too long, the betta will make an attempt to try to jump out of the puddle into other bodies of water to try to escape the toxic water. This is why betta fish are so good at jumping out of their bowls or aquariums. This also means that when a fish store is telling you to put a betta in the bowl, it's literally telling you to replicate the most harsh conditions that this fish can barely survive in. That's like saying because elephants in Africa don't get any water or food for a few weeks or days during a year because of a drought, that we should just stop feeding and giving water to captive elephants as well. They'll be fine, right? I mean, it happens to them in the wild. This applies to any animal. You can keep a dog in a cage or a crate for the rest of its life and never take it out. And it's still going to be alive and it's still going to be happy to see you, to interact with you, so I'm sure it's happy, right? Nope. Just because an animal can survive does not mean that it is thriving. You should strive to give your pet fish the best possible habitat that you could afford. So thanks for watching. Be sure to share this video and check out some other videos that I have about betta fish on my YouTube channel. And be sure to subscribe if you already haven't. Therefore you won't miss out on any future videos and can be part of the awesomeness. If you agree or disagree, be sure to let me know in the comments below and see you on Thursday.